Hello, brothers, sisters, friends. Welcome to our midweek lesson. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, teaching a lesson based on Dr. Tim Elmore's book on the art of connecting with others. For today's topic, it's entitled Hot Air Balloon. Interesting title, isn't it? You might be thinking, why? Why hot air balloon? Can I read a quote for you from Dr. Tim Elmo? Hot air balloons rise as the burner is released, but eventually they will begin to fall and need to be refilled. They must continue to be filled in order to go up. People are like this. They must be consistently encouraged in order to reach their highest potential. So according to the book, what Dr. Tim Elmo is saying is that we as human beings need to be constantly encouraged, just like a hot air balloon, fill up so that we can rise up. So in 1993, in Colorado, Aspen, Colorado, um, you know, they have a lot of uh, balloon tours and adventure. So this particular balloon tour had six passengers in it. And they were flying across the mountains of Colorado. Can you imagine the sight? It must have been so beautiful. But unfortunately, something bad happened. The captain did not realize that he did not fill up the balloon enough. And so the balloon began to fly lower and lower and lower and started to go close to the electrical power line. Then in a the last minute ditch, the captain tried to fill up the balloon, but unfortunately, it was too late. And the balloon crashed into the power lines. And according to the news, all six people and the pilot died. What a sad story. What was the problem with the hot air balloon? The problem with the hot air balloon was that the captain forgot to keep refilling the hot air balloon. And so the balloon began to fall and fall and fall until it was too late. And we, as human beings, also need to be filled up constantly. And you might be thinking, fill up with what? We're not talking about filling up with food or, or drinks or things like that. But we're talking about filling up that inner deep emotional needs. What are the inner deep emotional needs that we need? The need to feel loved and encouraged. So if we don't fill each other up, just like the hot air balloon filling up the air, you know what will happen to us? We will also slowly deflate and slowly fall down and fall down and fall down. And unfortunately, we might even crash. The Bible says here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So you might think, but I don't go around criticizing other people or being harsh. So isn't that enough? As long as I just keep quiet, do my own thing, I'm, I'm not harsh towards the other person. The other person should be happy. You know, but with the analogy of the hot air balloon, you can see the captain first fill it up, but it began to what? Deflate. Human beings are just like that. You know, you can fill up the person one time, but if you don't keep filling up, the emotion of love and connection will also begin to deflate. So you'll find that it's not just not doing something 
like not being critical towards the other person, not being harsh. But if we don't encourage, other people will also feel deflated. And thus, our relationship with other people will become disconnected. So it's very important to learn to encourage, to build up one another so that the balloon of love in our hearts can grow. So here is another evidence why encouraging each other is very important. You know, during the Korean War between the North and the South Korean, and uh, one of the things that the army, the US Army found out was a lot of their prisoners of war that was captured by the North Korean, they were dying at a very alarming rate, even more than World War II. And the Americans were quite surprised and they were wondering what is happening. So the doctors did some investigation and they found out that the North Korean army had a incredible dangerous strategy. And you know what they did? The army, the North Korean army, they decided to separate the soldiers, the prisoners of war, and do not allow the prisoners of war to encourage each other. And they don't allow social gathering. In fact, when they do gather, you know what they made them do? They made them criticize each other, made them confess bad things about their life. And they made the entire camp to talk bad things among one another. The word encouragement, affirming each other, is totally shut out. And because of that, the death rate of the Americans prisoners of war in North Korea at that time was very high in an alarming rate. And so we can see encouragement, not silence, is a very important thing. It's not enough to not criticize or be harsh, but it's also important that we learn to affirm and encourage each other so that what? The balloon of emotional needs in one another is filled up. So we have to ask ourselves, are we building each other up? Are we encouraging one another? Are we affirming each other so that that balloon can be filled up and we can go higher and higher in our relationship with one another? So here are five practicals of how can we learn to encourage one another. Number one, make them sincere. It's no use sending or giving encouragement to somebody else if it's not sincere. You know what? People know it. Okay. Have you ever received greeting cards from companies? I, I receive quite a bit. You know, during Chinese New Year, I will get many greeting cards from different companies that we have interaction with. And the card will come, Happy Chinese New Year! And that's it. You know, the, they will sign it over there, but I look at that, I said, hmm, they only want my business. You know, that encouragement that they sent was not very sincere and it doesn't really hit home. So when we learn to encourage each other, be sincere. And secondly, make your encouragement specific. You know, that was a challenge for me when I was a young Christian. And whenever I encourage someone, it would be like, hey bro, good job. Is that specific? It's like, Okay, what did I do well? I, I know I've done that with my wife sometimes. I would just say, honey, great job. And she'll turn around and say, uh, what did I do well in? It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, when we make encouragement to one another, let it be specific. So what does that mean? Let me give you an example. This is what it means to be specific. 
Hey bro, your presentation last week was awesome. And you know which part I like? I like the part that you talk about the way we can grow. And especially the example that you gave about the hot air balloon. <laughs> okay, all right, my lesson today. So, you know, that is more specific. And as the recipient of such an encouragement, I'll feel like, yeah, okay, I know what I did that was very helpful. That encouragement really helped me. Okay, and number three, learn to make your encouragement public. So what does that mean? Learn to encourage people in front of others. Have you ever been encouraged in front of others and how that felt in your heart? Don't you feel, wow, I feel good. And fourthly, most importantly, make your encouragement personal. Nothing beats an encouragement that is personal. Because when it's personal, it really hit home. You know, one of the encouragement that I really love are from my kids because I know it's personal. And when it's personal, it really hits the heart. And finally, number five, learn when to make encouragement. Don't just make encouragement whenever. You know, encouragement is very important. So when do you encourage? When they fail. Yes, that is very important. Because when you encourage somebody when they fail, it gives them the motivation to do better. How about this? When they succeed. Now this, we are very familiar. You know, when they succeed, when you encourage them, it helps them to see what? That what they have done. That's correct. And finally, when they least expect it. So that they know that your encouragement is really true. It's from your heart. It's not just an act. In 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 6 to 8, talks about the power of encouragement. Where Hezekiah and Israel were surrounded by the enemies. In verse 6, it said, He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate and encouraged them with these words. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. For there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said. And as you can see, encouragement is so important, especially pointing our encouragement towards God. So brothers and sisters, hot air balloon, it needed to be refilled all the time. And when we don't fill it up, it will slowly deflate in time and eventually crash. And same thing with our hearts. We need to learn to refill our hearts and the hearts of other people through encouragement. Otherwise, that emotional need will slowly begin to deflate. And one day, the heart will be empty. So brothers, sisters, friends, take some time in your discipleship group today to discuss about this lesson and how you can go about encouraging one another. Thank you very much.